In this video I'm going to build a screw bump. Three different screw bumps actually. The screw bump working principle is really simple. The rotational movement of the screw or screws moves the water from the inlet to the outlet. Usually from the one end of the water bump to the other. Well, this is not always the case. So let's get right into it. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. For this build we obviously need 3D printed parts. Body and the lead I 3D printed with my super fast Bambi Lab X1 carbon. For material I use PLA and all those grey bars took me only 5 hours of printing time. Those yellow screws I printed with my GD Deck eye fast. For the material I use PLA. But if you know something about 3D printing, then you should know that printing those screws isn't an easy task. It doesn't matter how you try to print those, you will need supports. GD Deck eye fast can print multiple materials at the same time. And I printed supports with PTG. PLA and PTG don't wanna stick to each other at all. And when the model was ready, removing those supports was really easy. A, a bit easier. Not really easy. Also, two 775DC motors are required. I borrowed those from my 6 motor gearbox. Again. Now when I have all I need, it's time to assemble. By the way, this is pretty easy. I designed this to be as easy as possible to build. And also I tried to avoid not 3D printed things as much as possible. For example, I didn't use any bearings for this project. Always all my models are free to download. And I designed this pump the way that you can build this. And at the same time you don't need to order a lot of different not 3D printed things. Link for this model is down below. The first step is to screw hose nozzles to the bump housing. I didn't screw hose nozzles straight to the bump. I first screwed those double outer thread things. It's because if later I need to change the diameter of the nozzles for some reason, this way it's easier to do. Next, I just placed those two screws into the bump housing. They fit there perfectly. Then I added this middle section, or whatever this is, and screwed those two timing gears to the screws. I designed those gears in a way that nobody can mess this step up, because first, those gears have different amount of holes, and every hole have different offset. Also on the gears are those little lines. If they line up, everything is correct. When the gears and screws are nicely in place, it's time to add lead. By the way, here I messed up. My original design was like this. I plan to turn this with my 4 motor gearbox. This is connected to the bump with 8mm shaft, but it didn't work because those balls head blocked the shaft going through the hole. <laughs> really stupid mistake. But I redesigned the way I drive the bump. Well, like this. Two 775DC motors will drive two driver gears. And those two driver gears will turn the timing gears. So I connected 775DC motors to the motor mount with 4mm bolts. After that I hammered two square nuts to the driver gears and then gears to the motors. By the way, if you ever try to hammer something to the motor shaft, then make sure you support the other end of the shaft. Otherwise you will hit the rotor out of its place and it's sad. I secured the driver gears to the motor shafts with two M4 set screws. Now I connected to the motors to the rest of the water pump and it's done. Pump is ready. Now we can first time test this pump. I will run this pump with my TC motor speed controller that I use in every video. And the power I will take from the 6 amp LiPo battery. Now I'm outside and it's time to really test this pump. So here is my test setup. I will bump this water from the blue bucket to the grey bucket. And yeah, it's all. So let's get started. First I pre-primed the bump and then it didn't get started. I did this one more time and now it started. Well, this pump definitely works, but I was prepared for a bit better result. There were two things that did go wrong. First of all, like I said before, I planned to use my 4 motor gearbox, but instead I had to use two 775DC motors. And second, this pump is leaking, but not like usually. This time water is not leaking out from the pump, the air leaks into the pump. And this happens right from here. 
I came to this conclusion by the air bubbles inside this charged tube. By the way, both of those things that I just mentioned would not happen if I didn't had the reason to redesign my pump. But of course, I'm not happy with the result and I designed a new water pump. Big thanks for today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in platform to create a beautiful website with minimal effort. It doesn't matter are you a professional website builder or you don't have any clue how to create a website. Because it's so simple, everybody can do this. I just get started with Squarespace to make website for my channel and it has gone really well and it's truly easy. Squarespace have lot of powerful features and tools. For example, now you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through the gated member only content. Manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights. All on one easy to use platform. Also you can create an online store. It doesn't matter do you want to sell digital or physical things. Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Or present your work using Squarespace professional portfolio designs. Display projects in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share private work with your clients. Head to squarespace.com slash let's print to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code let's print. But now let's continue with the water bump. The next screw bump that I designed looked like this. This pump working principle is pretty much the same as the last one. But instead of moving water from one end to the other, this pump moves water from both sides to the middle, where it will be discharged to the outlet. I again printed the screws with my GD deck iFast and housing with Creality Sermon D1. Building this pump is even easier than the last one. First, I connect a shaft to the screws with three square nuts and M4 set screws. The lead. This time for leaking and stability, I use one shaft seal, aka simmering, simmering, sim simmering, and one 608 RS bearing. I hammer those two into this hole. First the seal and then the bearing. Before I assembled everything together, I also added those hose nozzle thread things. Because the last time those holes were a bit too small and fit was too tight, now I added an extra 0.3mm clearance to those holes and I f***ed it up. Now those holes are a bit too big. I'm not going to print the whole housing again because of that. I tried to fix this by using thread tape and it worked a bit but I ended up using hot glue. Not ideal but... Now I put the screw into the bump, added the lead and screwed the lead to the housing with 10 M4 bolts. I also 3D printed some mounts, connected the bump to my 4 motor gearbox and it's done. This time I will take the power from car battery. By the way this line over here, small detail but it does a lot actually. First of all I didn't need to use any super materials for those extrusions and the bump will not go into the roll when I drive it. So let's start pumping. This screw has to turn counterclockwise, so the peak gear has to do also, small gears has to turn clockwise, so plus and minus will be... Um, I pre-primed this pump again and it didn't start. I repeated this many times and it just didn't get started. So I changed the inlet to house nozzles and tube diameters. Now those thread things came handy. After this little modification, I got this pump running. It works a bit better than last one, but the performance was still not great. And weirdly, one inlet not pumping the water into the water pump. I have absolutely no idea why this happened. I run this pump multiple times and I try to help this pump, but one inlet just not stucking water in. Absolutely no idea why this happened. I'm still not happy with this pump, so I designed another one. The next one looks like this. This one has only one inlet, and it's here. This is outlet. Also, the pitch of the dreads are way more aggressive. This pump is really similar to the water jet engine. Only this part actually. Assembly. This part is really short because it's identical to the last one. I attach this to the shaft, put this into the pump, added a lead, and yes, this is the exactly same one. Screw this to the pump, and done. Again, I'm outside. I started with pre-priming and started the pump. But like the previous ones, it didn't start. I tried many times, but nothing. So I raised the water bucket even higher and I changed the tube and the hose nozzle diameter to a bit smaller one. And now finally this pump started. Every single time I expect way better result. It works but it's just really really pointless water pump. Like every other in this video. Usually I say I'm not happy with the result and I'm going to design another one. But not this time. My doctor told me that I had to distance myself from screw bumps after I saw a nightmare when I tried to chop carrots with those pumps for 10 hours. By the way, I really saw this nightmare. 
If you are not satisfied with the results of this video, I highly recommend to watch my two previous videos where I built low pumps. Those ones worked really well. I hope you enjoyed watching me building water pumps that worked not really well. Big thanks if you are still here. So see you guys in the next video really soon. Bye.